Super Sonic 98 here. Doing a complete playthrough of the Virtual Cabin. I did a couple of live streams of it. The first one, five minutes, live stream, my internet got cut off. Fortunately, but I do like that I got like 64 views. I'm surprised of it. Uh... And then I did the part one of the playthrough. And at that time, I thought that was it. So I just thought, I'll show you guys what to do and we'll get that over with. No, that is not it. Uh, me and the guys went through and we collabed all together to get it done. We did it. So basically, we're going to go look at some Easter eggs and look at how to get these patches you gotta unlock but first how do you get the password there's a password for the computer obviously most of you know but if you are watching this video and you don't know the password is mother how do you find that out besides looking up online you do these you flip these magazines and these newspapers around There you'll find these little guess, these word guesses, and all you gotta do is like just guessing. Obviously, this one wouldn't be muffin, but the first letter is M. That's why the first line is blue. Any line is blue. You take that letter out and put into the password, and it's gonna spell mother. There's another one you'll use. And so on and so on. Until then, you can't really use any of this stuff. I wonder what's going to happen to these two. But yeah. Hmm. So, I can go ahead and show you where you can find all your uh, newspapers and stuff. So here's the first one. Week one. This is week six, I believe. Yeah. This is week four. Week three. I think there's two and five left that I I have no clue where they're at. I don't yeah, there any there's nothing in the bathroom. Hmm. But yeah, you're not gonna find anything in here. No newspapers. Um hmm. Like I said, I don't remember where all this stuff's at. We just we were coming up with the mother idea. That it was mother from these, but we didn't find them all, so we don't know where all of them are at. But I would imagine you're not too far away. So let's go ahead and type this in. There you go. So now we do this. Bah, 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 bah. So, part four cap. I'll go ahead and grab this too. Part seven mask. Ooh, spider! Spooky! 
grab that too. Now these tapes, we'll talk about them. But it, the tapes help you with the pedestal items. real quick Alright, so I'm going to tell you right now, you see one thing on this plate, this little green pear apple thing. That means part one, so this is um, Steve Christie's little red bandana he wore in the first Friday film. One thing on the plate, that's from the first movie, goes there. That's how I figured this out. What was stumping me was I was thinking that this was the hat that that um what's her name from Part Nine wore, which she did wear a hat like this. It's actually Christian Glover's hat because I wasn't reading this information. It's Christian Glover's hat from Part Four. Four birds. There you go. I'll tell you the real way to find these, but. The, the way you're supposed to, but this is how I did it. But first, let me... Oh, I gotta go get Part 9's mask in the fire. Those two, real quick. God damn, you gotta be like really precise when you're doing this. All right. So you got all the masks there in order. You pick up Roy's, and there's your badge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put Roy's mask. Uh, there is a way you can put his mask back on there I just can't sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't doesn't really matter all right so if you remember from part two Jason kills a, sh a little a pretty big cop chasing him in the woods. Well, not pretty big. I mean, he's average, I guess. Well, anyways, he chases him into the woods, and I'm not going to explain what happens to him, but it's just saying he ain't going to need this badge anymore. Part 2, badge. Two birds. Now, you get three birds. That means... We get the part three yo-yo. And there you go. Now, they're like, why is there a VHS tape there? Well, because... You're not supposed to do it like this. At least that's not the way you're supposed to. But that's how I did it. The real way you're supposed to do this is grab these VHS tapes. And what you do with these tapes are, you have to go back and watch the movies. Get out. 
one through four, and they're um, it's like let's see. This one is from the first movie, I believe, and this is where you'll see uh, Chris uh, Steve Christie's bandana. I don't see how this helps with that, but I guess you're supposed to rewatch the movies with this. So I'll show you all the tapes. There's that's for the first one. This is for the second movie. Jessica, that was the that was what I was trying to think of the name. And it's for part three. This is for part four, but well, it says part four on there, but it's got it's it's got a bunch of part five stuff, you know. Like, it talks about Reggie the Reckless and Roy. That's why I thought it had something to do with part five, but it doesn't. There, I, I'm still trying to find out. I'm, try, I'm still trying to get this on there. There we go. Uh, I had it. There we go. That's how you get on there. You can put it back on there. Does this mean Roy is coming to the game? Obviously, yes, he is coming to the game eventually. Is it paranoia? Or is it something else? Don't know yet. So you see these dioramas in here and in here. These are simple and easy, to be honest with you. Alright, so in part three... This is spoilers for part three. It's an old movie, so really, you should have watched it by now. You're gonna have Ollie here. He was the guy that got his arm cut off. He got beat up by Jason by, with a wrench, I believe, in the barn, but he didn't die. He comes back for more and gets his arm cut off and whacked to death with a machete. Where's it an axe? I think it's a machete. Then you put part three, Jason, here. And you put Chris Higgins there. You've recreated. And. The final scene of Higgins Haven's Barn, part three. Now, me and my friends, we, uh, we had finished this and did that and got the badge for it over there. And we finished this too, but we couldn't get this drawer open. That's because it counts as one badge. That's obvious, but it wasn't obvious with us because it was our first time playing the virtual cabin. We had no clue, and it just... But I, when I figured it out, it kind of pissed me off too. Like, oh, well, I'm stupid. Yes, yes I am. Well, Jessica goes here with the knife. Part 9 goes here. Steven goes here. And there's your, uh, bat. There's a little patch. And then you have recreated the scene from part nine. So, that would make us two ba three badges now? Hmm. What's the fourth badge? I'll tell ya. So you're going to come across these numbers, these blue numbers. All right. There's a 7. There's a 5 and is that a sack hit Jason mask? Ooh. And you're just going to come across different things.
Here's a number one. You're going to find these blue numbers, and that's what's going to make your uh, a phone number. I know there wasn't nothing on there, but I just wanted to look at it. But you're going to find these blue numbers, and I had no idea where they're all at. I'm going to tell you right now, we looked this stuff up, most of this. But I'm just showing you right now that uh, the blue numbers. Now I'm going to give you the number. Let's uh, look at my handy dandy notebook. Alright. So the number is 1 555 One. Five, 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 three, four, two, nine, two, seven, seven. And there's your final patch. Well, for this area at least. Ooh. But I'm not gonna end it there. I'm gonna there's also a bunch of other phone numbers that I'm gonna call for you guys. And I'm gonna look at for yeah, there's some other phone numbers I'll call for you guys real quick before we uh, leave this area. Just giving a quick look back. I'm gonna play the uh, little tapes, these little walkie talkie tapes for you guys too. Before we do anything as well. Just giving a little bit more of a look out before we uh, leave this area. Pamela's knife. Now I've never seen this in game, so that leaves you wondering. I haven't seen a lot of these weapons. It's like uh, this hatchet. Is that the axe that the counselors get? It looks a little bit smaller and different because usually the I mean the axe that the counselors get looks a little bit more like that but I think that's part that's part three that one machetes look different because I think the bigger one is part seven and the smaller one is uh, the counselors machete so I don't know this might be our counselor axe, but I think it's a little bit too small. Definitely the Pamela knife, I don't know. we never seen it in the game. This is in the part four map. That's cool. That's uh, from part nine, when he died. I'm not gonna go around, but uh, Real quick, that might be a little reference to something that might be coming later on in the cabin. Yeah, it's Jason X. I'm not gonna. Everybody knows by now it's Jason X. Alright, let's get these phone numbers dialed. All right, so you got the diner, 911, police, 
the SS Lazarus and the Unger Mental Institute or the Unger Institute of Mental Health I'm sorry now I never seen anybody dial 911 I would hope that everybody knows that this is a real number you can call on here What's your emergency? Hello, do you need police, ambulance, or fire? Are you there? Do you have an emergency? Then we're going to call the diner. This is a part five reference. I'm not going to... Some of these, I, I mean, I can give you it, but these are pretty easy to find. But um, I'll go ahead and give it to you. For the diner, it is one five 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 six eight nine two three four four. Uh, the police number is right here, so I'm not. It's one five 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 zero six one eight. Not that. Uh, the SS Lazarus, which is the the boat map. And I'll give you a number for that when I after I'm done. The SS Lazarus is one five 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 C two NYC. So one five 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 seven three two two six eight no no nine sorry two I, I'm sorry it's one five 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 one ah uh, uh, 
I am so sorry. It's one by f you. You got it. And then Unger, which is the hospital town he was in. One five 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 seven one three one nine seven nine, I think. Yeah. Here we go. Unger Institute of Mental Health, how may I help you? Can you speak up? Oh. Now what happens when you uh, mess up the phone? That's what happens. Alright, I think we're ready to go down and to see Jason. Or should I say Jason's Oh, you guys, I forgot to, sh to show you the, um, the radios. My bad. I don't know if that's anything you guys want, but I'll show it. What was the creepiest part about working on the game? Oh, for sure, the phone calls. Okay, sorry, um, that was great. Can you start over, but this time incorporate the question into your answer? Uh, my bad, yeah. So the creepiest part about working on this game was I get these weird phone calls to my personal phone. We worked on the game for almost, uh, I think it was about three years. And every single Friday the 13th, we would get these calls from someone. At first, I thought it was someone at the studio, Paul or Dan or something, but it had to be like an F-13 fanboy or something. They would use this voice distortion and claim to be Pamela warning us to honor the memory of her son. Sometimes they would just laugh in the phone and hang up, but, but most of the times they would just, you know, complain about the game taking so long. That doesn't sound that creepy. It wasn't until one time I called the number back and heard this. Okay, so did you want to do an intro? Uh, hello. Welcome to the virtual cabin. I'm Chuck Brengard, CEO of Vilphonic. And we are the developers behind Friday the 13th, the game, which you are currently playing now. Is there anything you want to say to the fans? Sure. I just want to say thanks for playing and supporting the game. Our fan base has been incredible. This project has exceeded even our wildest dreams, and that's because of all your continued and amazing support. So where are we? So this is the Virtual Cabin, 2.0 to be exact. The Virtual Cabin was a way for our backers to check out new art assets and discover a few hidden Easter eggs as we were building the game. It was a really engaging way to show a sneak peek at what we were developing. So, why bring it back? A ton of work went into researching the Friday the 13th films for the game, and we wanted to present a fun way to go behind the scenes and learn more about how the movies and the game were made. Consider this as an expanded virtual museum, a space where you can explore the lore of Friday the 13th and take it all in. 
Who knows? There might even be a few new Easter eggs to discover. If you go digging deep enough... <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound so ominous. Sweet, well, uh, now you know the virtual cabin goes a little deeper than we let on. There are quite a few puzzles, well, more like secrets left to discover. We hid some content in this cabin that will not be easy to unlock. You'll really have to think outside the box. So like a puzzle game. Think of this less like a puzzle game designed to get through in like an afternoon, and more like an experience for our community to get to know the movies better, or for the hardcore fans to test their knowledge. That uh, might be too much to say, but we can always cut that out later, right? Mm-hmm. And um, how will players know when they've uncovered all the secrets? Um, it should be pretty obvious. Congratulations on completing the virtual cabin. In the future, we might update this space to reveal what's behind those two curtains. But for now, we just want to say thank you for playing and invite you to stay as long as you would like. All right, that's it. Well, for the first part, at least. You can bring him back, you know. There's always a way.